Hey YouTube, what goes on? And welcome to this about action figures, bringing you episode five of the X Files. Yes, this is the show where we as fans go back and rewatch the greatest animated show of all time, at least in the comic book world, X Men: The Animated Series. We go through the episode, we chop it up, I grab all those little screen grabs so the mouse house doesn't sue me. Uh, we talk about our favorite parts of the episode, we summarize it for you. Uh, and as always, I try to bring on a special guest every week to co-host with me to go through this great show we all grew up loving as kids. And now we have the opportunity to essentially relive as adults as we build up to the release of X-Men 97, the sequel series on Disney+. Plus. They'll be coming out sometime in the back half of 2023, I believe, uh, which will basically be a, a continuation of where we left off at the end of X-Men back in the original version. So very excited to be here today to talk about episode five. But before we get to talking about anything of the episode, I have an amazing guest this week. This dude is very well known throughout the community. He obviously has a live stream of his own that I love to watch when I have AW and them on the same time, of course. Uh, and that is the amazing, the talented, the very cool dude, Jay Shaw. I'm so excited to be here. I love popcorn. I love snacks. So. <laughs> Do that played out much better. That played out much better in my head. <laughs> I haven't had anybody die on air yet, so please don't oh, call. Cool. I believe in my area we call them an old maid. A a yeah, a yeah. Popcorn kernel didn't pop, so please take a swig of yeah. your there just to be safe, sir. I'm sir, good. Thank I'm you good. for being here. I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you, man. And I, I was uh, that that was that was too kind of an intro. I cannot live up to that intro. For sure, for sure. But uh, <laughs> no, you know, thank you so much, man. I'm just happy to be here, dude. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be. I'm happy to be invited. I'm happy to be a part of this community. Um, you know, it just, just, I'm just happy to be here. Well, it's greatly appreciated. I know you're a very busy guy, so you set yeah. the time aside to be here. It means a lot to me and the channel and to our viewers, obviously. Of course. Um, yeah. So essentially, as you know, we're going to talk about episode five tonight. Um, I always mm -hmm. kick off every show with asking our guest, "What does?" x-men the animated series mean to you a lot of us grew up watching it as kids we had the toys we had the pizza box stuff from pizza hut you know what what does this show mean to you and what did it mean to you as a kid and now uh, i mean dude like you know uh between this and batman the animated series ninja turtles right i mean these are the shows that like you know spider-man you know the defined us um you know defined me uh you know and then you know from here got to the comic books and everything else like yeah, man, like this show is this this show is us, you know, and um, I, I I've really been loving doing this lately. So, like, you know, I mean, this is this is where it started, right? Like, here it is. This is morph, you know, but uh, this is how it started. And this is where we're at, you know, like, uh, again, is he a perfect figure? No, but damn. Damn, that's uh, that's a mighty fine improvement, you know, so um, yeah, man, this uh this was actually like, you know, this show um, and then this show in, in, in inspired so much of, you know, my love of geekdom and, and comic books and everything else. And and it actually inspired one of my first like real shots, um, you know, when uh, when the Sentinel came out, the, the big Sentinel, the HasLab, um, the first thing I thought of was doing a shot with, you know, Morph. Uh, of course, we didn't have a Morph there then. Um, so I used a uh, I used a head a hood with the screaming head on a uh, a cyclops body with the the jacket to to get to capture it, but uh, yeah man like this this show is it dude like this I probably don't shoot enough X Men um, mostly because I'm always afraid of like screwing it up you know like when something's so close to you that you just don't want to screw it up, but uh, yeah dude this this show is everything and I'm I'm so excited uh, for ninety seven can't tell if that is a shadow or if my face is dirty or if I got clocked in the head sorry. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that, um, I'm excited for 97, uh, cause you know, the, the I don't know if we're going to talk about this later, but that last season of, uh, the show was not great. Um, and then also the way it ended, curious to see how they decide to continue it. So no spoilers in case you haven't watched the 30 year old show, but, uh, you know. Yeah, that's, uh, that's where I'm at. Don't, don't, don't piss off the audience. You're spoiling that. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't want to, you know. Yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough over in the, in the on the Infinity Equation podcast to have Bo DeMaio on, who's the showrunner. Uh, he didn't, you know, mm -hmm. give us too much of the tea, obviously. He can't uh, last year, but he did more or less tell us what he could, which was it's literally picking up with Xavier going off into space. 
Um, oh, really? Yeah, t- totally agree uh, with what you said regarding that final season. Um, I, I know for people watching, if you if you haven't seen the final season and you're new to the show, uh, they ba- basically made it on the cheap. They changed the animation houses. The animation was different. Um, the stories still were okay for the most part, but you can tell that the, the lack yeah. of animation uh, money that was invested definitely hurt the product, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, you know, the shifting of the focus to Jubilee, was it bad? You know, um, but like, yeah, you're right. Like the the shift, like the which, by the way, it was very common back then to shift animation houses like that, right? I mean, Ninja Turtles did it a bunch of times. Um, you know, I think I think one of the the Disney shows were probably the only ones that stayed pretty consistent. But I mean, that makes sense, right? They're an animation house, so. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're you're definitely right. Like they the storylines weren't bad, but the animation got weird, and then you know, I mean, look. If they're gonna literally pick up from that last episode, then I, I'm even more excited. I think yeah, just to see how they do it. Really cool. They've I haven't shown any here yet. Um, they're they're out there, but they have shown you know character mock-ups and things. And we're mm-hmm. literally getting Magneto in like the uh, New Mutants years, where he was the leader of the X Men. We're, mm-hmm. we're getting that that uniform, which is amazing. That they're they're literally going that deep with it. Bo really knows the show. He really knows the product. He very much wants it to be a, a, a good spiritual connection. So. I'm pumped for it. And that's kind of why I decided yeah. to start doing this, you know? Yeah, this is, this is great. It's like, you know, I, I love the, uh, the lead up to it. It's super smart and super cool. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. So I greatly appreciate it. Well, let's say hello to people in the chat and then we'll rip right into things here. Uh, four feathers in the house. Still on four feathers. What's up, man? Good all, so, uh, good all support of the channel. We got Lucas in the house. What's up, Luke? What's up, Luke? All right. Then Lucas also added, uh, four feathers that are right. So cheers. Yeah. Cheers. And Lucas also says, Hey, disavowed. Hello, J Shot. I'm Luke. <laughs> hey, Luke. All right. So let's get this thing cracking right away because I know how I am. Yep. I take it off topic very quickly. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> try to tangents are my middle name. <laughs> so as always, we were very classy, very professional, very stylized and expensive free Google slides utilized here. Um, very thrifty here on Dispout Action Figures, as you can see. Uh, so opening up here with episode five, um, I always have to tell everybody, this is like the Oprah book club, but for us comic book and toy nerds, you know, we like it participate, whether you're watching us on the playback and you can go back and, you know, watch us first and then go back and watch the episode. Or if you're planning ahead and watching the episode, then coming out live with us. Uh, and if you're in the chat, please feel free. Let us know your thoughts. I try to hide them on the screen as best I can. Uh, we try to keep the show under about 45 minutes. So they know you, all of you are busy and there's many streams you could be watching. So we want to share our thoughts, have some fun and kick you out of here and get you out the front door onto your next show. That's it. And I, I love interacting with the chat. So the more the chat goes off, the more fun we'll have. That's epic. I completely agree, man. So every week, Jay shot, I like to open it up with previously on X-Men. I love it. You couldn't have done it better myself. So essentially last week, uh, we had yet again the X-Men getting wrecked. Every episode to start the series had gotten wrecked. Uh, Rogue freaking destroyed a, a, a power or a, a chemical plant with Magneto. Chemical plant. Obviously. Xavier got super pissed. He gave people like the bony finger of judgment like three times throughout yep. the <laughs> You know, and, and then we got Wolverine uh, wrecked by Sabretooth because of the bony finger of judgment of Xavier. Um, and that's basically what happened last week. <laughs> nice. Yeah, man. So we open up the episode, and this is the first extensive look we get at the X-Men training in the Danger Room. I freaking love the Danger Room in the comics. What do you think, Jay, about the Danger Room? Oh, uh, dude, Danger Room is so iconic. Um, I mean, and I I know the Danger Room is in the in the in the comics too. But when I think Danger Room, I think I think the cartoon one. Like it's just that's it. And I, I actually think about um, Oilers. Did you see Oilers Workshop did like a little like a uh, uh, Danger Room base that he made up, no, where it was like, I, oh, he did it like, and he did it like as part of like his like you could do it too type of thing. Like yeah, like we're all talented like Oilers. Like yeah, okay. Um, but it was like this cool like uh, like almost like as if it was the Savage Land. And then it went into the like the digital squares that turned into, you know, the actual like metal ba- uh, metal metal room that is a danger room. So it was really really cool. I need you to send that. Uh, link here. I gotta check that. Out. I gotta, I'll look for it. Yeah, I'll send it. I'll send it in chat. That's so. awesome, man. So, but yeah, we're in the danger room and the X Men are training and like they're go- they're hardcore. Like you just said, they're training to be prepared for the field. Literally, Gene Gray almost takes a saw blade to the face. 
<laughs> like they're not screwing around here. And then the part I love the most about this opening scene is that we jumped at like Cyclops and Xavier up in the booth. Right. And Xavier, yeah. like, my X-Men. I'm sorry yeah. I'm being an ass. <laughs> you are for a reason. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna... just standing there like, yes, sir. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Good old soldier boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Professor X is like, I'm going to almost kill you to save your life. So, yeah. <laughs> that, that Chucky, um, he's something else, right? <laughs> yeah, Chucky. We'll talk more about him throughout the episode. Payne's Toys Samples. What's up, man? Thanks for coming. Oh, Bye. Uh, what we got here? Lucas added storm names to get her damn claustrophobia. Other than <laughs> that, that is a focus of this episode, Jay Shots. We'll be wrapping around yes. that one. Uh, and then Lucas added, and Wolverine is healing way, way too, too slow. slow. <laughs> way too slow. Yeah, we talked about that last oh. week too when uh, Pac was on. That you know we're so used to seeing Wolverine now in the movies, just literally mm -hmm. like getting shot in the face, and it just suddenly heals like in a second. Um, yeah, in the cartoon, it's very different. <laughs> yeah, I know the cartoon. He 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 takes his time. I mean, he definitely heals faster than other people, but mm, yeah, so not uh, not as fast as he should. Or I mean, maybe maybe he is healing as fast as he should, and we're just impatient because Hugh Jackman heals with beauty as well. I don't know. So it's, it's hard to do what that man does, right? That's true. It's very hard. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we can basically while we're in there. As, as we mentioned with the claustrophobia as being a, an ongoing plot point throughout this episode, uh, Storm is basically getting trapped as the danger room closes the walls in, and she freaks out. We get this image again of her as a kid, which we also saw last week in the battle with Magneto, which caused her to not be that, that helpful in the fight. Uh, and then she basically freaks the hell out and um, just starts blowing her power all over the place. And she's, uh, she's not in a good way here, Jay Shot. No, no, she's not. And um, I loved, you know, and again, this happens later on, but I love how we we get glimpses of this. Like, and, the, and this is one of those things, too, where you talk about, like, the show in general, right? Like, you're setting something up. And as a kid, we don't realize it, right? They're setting these shots of her up and, you know, growing up. I don't want to I don't want to say where she grew up wrong. So, you know, where she's growing up in her hometown. I just like I don't want to be that guy and mispronounce it. So uh, and then like later on, it plays out, right? Like we plays out with Shadow King and all that stuff. And you know, it's like, it's, it's really cool. Like it's, it's, you know, back then, I don't know if we appreciated it, but I actually like, I think last year um, went back and rewatched the whole series just to get ideas for shots and stuff. And I remember watching this being like, Oh, don't damn. Like, and it wasn't like, Oh, we're going to set this up. And then it's a different background later on. Like it was bland. Like it was a good, it was a good job. Yeah. They, they really do an awesome job. And again, this being season one in these early episodes, mm -hmm. they're setting up that these, characters have these great powers but they're still flawed and have different weaknesses as well that can affect them they're not they're not superman they're not unbeatable no. you know, they they have flaws that can be you know used by their enemies to hurt them obviously exactly yep yep all right andre, and they are and they are used for sure they are, they are andre just jumped in he says i bought a battle bot play set to use as a base yeah. danger room setup still have a lot of work to do on it but it's looking better that's a pretty cool idea right that's nice that's awesome yeah, yeah. So, so Storm is freaking out. Her powers almost kill everybody. And then, like, finally, Xavier shuts off the machine. He, like, beams down there telepathically. And he's <laughs> like, again, he's like, hey, everybody, I'm sorry I'm an ass. But sorry, Storm, not sorry. There's going to be a moment <laughs> later in this episode where you need to fight through your claustrophobia <laughs> to be a good leader. So I'm going to get the best out of you one way or the other. Right. I love to, like, if you were uncertain that this show took place in the nineties. Mm -hmm. This, this shot is clearly a depiction of the nineties between rogue and storms hair and the way the trench coats and on Jubilee and Remy, like mm -hmm. there it is. It's right there. The sideways <laughs> belt. That's always on rogue. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it's, which is amazing. I'm, I'm looking at my figure oh. on my, in my detox right now. I don't have the belt very sideways. I have to fix that later on. I think Yeah, fix it. Yeah. yeah it's just Do a disservice. I'm a sad collector, yes. Um, <laughs> this does set up a plot point for later on that we're going to get to. Uh, then we jump back to Wolverine, who is still healing, healing very slowly. Um, and Jay Shaw, this kind of starts to set up some of the more iconic Wolverine moments that people, I think, tend to like make memes out of in this show. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is it, right? This is uh, is it the end of this episode that we get the the infamous one? I won't again, won't spoil it, but oh, it's coming soon. Yeah. Uh, oh, is it okay? Yep. So um, we get the moment yeah. where 
Gene comes in. And Gene's basically like, hey, Wolverine, you know, what's up? How are you? What goes on? Um, you're, you're, you're training too hard. You have to heal. He's, of course, being a tough guy about it. He kind of like falls down in pain. And we get this sentimental moment where they've really been pushing the love triangle in the first four episodes. Now they're really showing us like, yes, she's with Psych. Yes, he loves her. She kind of loves him a little bit, too. And we get that triangle going on in the show. Yeah. And it's funny because there's there's no sound coming out of this, but I can very distinctly hear him calling her Jeannie right now. Jeannie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's, uh, yeah. She goes, Cyclops is waiting for me. I, I am. Yeah. Too. I am, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was at the stress. Like, this show was essentially aimed at a kid's market. This is heavy oh. stuff for, like, an eight-year-old to be watching here. It was really heavy stuff. Um, they're actually talking about something later on, but, but yeah, like keeping in mind that this was heavy stuff, but, uh, like we had a conversation and I won't, uh, I'll, 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 I promise I'll keep us to 45 minutes and not go on too much of a tangent, You're fine. but like, you know, in, in talking about, uh, heavy themes in the show, right? Like later on you, you get the like real themes of the mutants and people being different and stuff. And I feel like, you know, and this is, this may sound weird, but people that watch this show and love this show are more open and accepting to other people, right? Because we watched this, right? And we saw this and we were like, they're just like us, right? Like, you know, I immediately think of uh, Hank's speech, right? If you prick us, do we not bleed? Like, you know, and and it just like, to me, it was like one of the reasons of like, you know, growing up that I was like, yeah, cool. People are different and it's all right. Like, it's just one of those things that I felt like this was, this was a foundation of like who I am as a person, you know, and, and it was dealing with those themes. And we're like, what, nine, 10 years old or 12 years old, whatever it is, depending on how old you are. Um, I think you and I are the same age. So, uh, you know, it, it's like, oh, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. So, you know, cool. Good on you guys for uh, for not being afraid to push the boundaries here on a kid's yeah. show. So. Exactly. Completely agree with, with that sentiment. I know other guests have echoed your sentiment as well. And I really mm-hmm. do think that it really has impacted uh, us as adults, having seen it as children, being introduced, again, I grew up in a small area where, you know, we weren't yeah. exposed to as many different things. And at a young age, you know, having those important things taught to you that you have to be accepting. And there are people who are different and they're, they, they're different in some ways, but we're all in the same, same way as the other. And, yeah. um, you know, learning that. And that's one thing I love about the series as well is that, you know, it, hold, it holds up relatively well. If you want to go back, I don't have any kids of my own, but if I want to go back and watch this with my niece or my nephew and they get into it, like they're going to learn the same lessons as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's a great lesson, you know. Obviously, it's a great lesson, but it's also just like again, it's but it's not like to me too. It wasn't forced, right? It fit a storyline, and it's a storyline that obviously was written, you know, by Marvel Comics and Stan Lee, and you know when that when it was introduced, like and it was done for that reason, you know. It's the same reason why he talks about uh, creating Black Panther, you know, and uh, and teaching that way. So, but just like almost to see that continued from the comics, from Stan into this show. And then, you know, again, into us. And like you're saying, you have kids or you teach, you show other kids, your kids or other people's kids. I don't care. You want to kidnap somebody and throw them down there on a Saturday and let them watch a show. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not constituting for kidnapping, but Hey, people need to watch this stuff. Uh, it's a good message. You know, kidnapping is not a good message, but Hey, you know, you know if you're going to kidnap a kid, making them watch a cartoon is probably not the worst thing that could happen in that day. So Kid- kidnap, I feel like kidnapping a kid that maybe, you know, and having them watch a show about, you know, uh, being accepting of other people is not so bad in the end. Like, uh, you know, saying, you know, friends don't let friends kidnap kids. Um, so, <laughs> all right. So, we, so we see Scott and Jeannie out on their date nights at <laughs> the opera, and uh, they're strolling along the street. And I, 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 I mentioned this in previous episodes. Uh, going back, you notice a lot when you're watching. But for me to prepare mm-hmm. these slideshows. I'm obviously screenshotting every few seconds, most of getting those screen grabs. And I notice things that I don't always would have noticed otherwise. Um, I don't remember where they're walking by. And in the background at the newsstand, you see a Sentinel and Magneto slapped right there on the newsstand. Little details. Yeah. Yeah. Or even think about it. Even think about the fact that they went to go see Phantom of the Opera, right? Yeah. It's a story of a disfigured guy who is hiding, right? He's using his mask to... Uh, to live a normal normal life or to torture people, you know, to to try to live a normal life. He was also in a love triangle, right? Like there's a lot of nice little uh, um, uh, parallels there that, again, totally buzz by us as kids, but, you know, uh, make it that way. So, 
Yeah, man, definitely. Yeah, uh, man. Four Who's that? Four feathers. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, good point. And yes, I can agree with you there, man. Other things earlier in my life before X Men also affected me and gave me the same outlook on people in general. The show. Yeah, man, c- it couldn't be more true. Also jumping in is the Yo Joe Jerk. What's going on, Scotty? No, <laughs> Scotty. Earth oh, to sorry. Scotty. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say Scotty doesn't know. That, that oh, God doesn't know. <laughs> now that's in my brain for the rest of the week. That's great. That's my drive to work song tomorrow. Um, best so, best cameo ever. Oh yeah, yes, definitely. So so Jeannie's like uh, like Scott. You gotta you gotta lay off. You're no good to us. Now let's let me think of something. Jay shot. Psych is like there's no more important job than being an X man. I think that's great. But we we know that the Avengers get paid for being Avengers by Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. Does X Men mm-hmm. get paid to be X Men? Like, where are they getting their money to go out to the club and stuff? Well, I would imagine, right? They got room and board covered, right? They're living in the X Mansion, so you know, you know, old Chucky there is taking care of that. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Do they get like a stipend? Do they, you know, did did Scott have to go ask Dad for some money to take Gene out on a date? You know, like I don't know. But the, that's a that's a really good question. Yeah, so, like the, that's the one thing. Really that good us. Like, how deep are Chucky's pockets? You know. I don't know. I mean, it's good. I mean, hey, having a mansion in Westchester, New York, that's that's not cheap, even in the 90s. This is true. This is true. Nowadays, that thing would be worth God knows how much money. I oh, my God. Forget it. Hurt, hurt, hurts the brain. Um, so this is where we more or less start having the plot develop. Um, we we have a leech of the Morlocks. We find out about them later on. Uh, and we mm-hmm. find, he's basically stealing fruit, which we know is just a cover for what they're doing. But to us, we don't know the backstory yet. And of right. course, he gets chased by a bunch of bigots down in the subway. Right. Uh, so right, I love the bigots. The bigots all look the same too. That's my favorite part. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's it's <laughs> definitely a, a uniform look for the bigots. Now, yep. I tried to Google this mud guy's name. I think he's cool, and I couldn't find this dude's name. No. No, mm. they, they never say it in the episode that I've noticed. Um, couldn't find his name, so I don't know if he has a name. I don't know if he was in the comics or just created, but. He like basically uses his mud power, whatever the hell it is, to start you know retaliating against the uh, humans who are basically chasing Leech down. And then we get our first look at a small group of the Morlocks. Jay Shot, what goes through your head when you see these awesome looking characters on screen? I I I I remember the seeing them as a kid and just being like taken back, you know, like just like oh, like these. And again, by the way. Here's another parallel, right? You got the guy with one eye, Cyclops. Yep. You know, you know, you got the sh- the the cement guy who's angry and short, Wolverine, right? So like you're seeing a lot of these parallels here with the um, you know, with the X Men themselves. But I just like remember like distinctively looking at it and going, like they're the anti X Men, right? Like like they're it's the Bizarro world for them, you know. That's perfect. That's a great way of looking at it. That. They are they are very much that other side of the coin that they, and they obviously mm-hmm. discussed that throughout the episode that they're living in the sewers yep. they can't live on the surface right 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 they're living on the sewers <laughs> meanwhile the X Men are in mansions yeah exactly I mean that, that seems pretty inequitable right there um so we have uh, Jean Grey and Cyclops Jean's like oh great so much for date night so they run down <laughs> there and she blasts her way with a, a lot of good use of Jean Grey's telekinesis throughout this episode as well mm-hmm. showing off her power set I would say. Yep. Yep. And they get in there, and uh, the Morlocks. You mentioned the the Cyclops kind of dude with the hair. It's almost like Cyclops m- like meshed with Legion because of the hair. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good call. Yeah. Legion. Legion haircut. So they throw two. Uh, and this is where I get confused. These just look look like to be two random people on the subway. Like the yeah. biggest. The biggest are one thing, right? But the, these yep. two kids get thrown down into the train tracks, and it's like, oh, okay, this isn't good. I think they're aren't they just like bystanders? Like they just got in the way, yeah, right? But clearly, a, clearly they're on their way to a punk show. Like yeah, that's yeah, they're, they're going to see uh, it's the nineties. Yeah. Who'd be playing back then? Uh, yeah. uh, 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 Rancid, Rancid. You want to see Rancid? There we go. Rancid. Oh, Rancid. Ruby, Ruby Soho. I was just got a little bit of Ruby Soho. That's right. Um, not supporting that evil faction though in AW. Um, so, <laughs> so here comes the train. Of course, of course, the train happens to be coming while they're down there. Um, no problem, though. Don't worry. Jean uses her power of telekinesis to levitate them out of the way. Um, this is where we get Cyclops. And we get, we get a little, little small skirmish here, just with with Jean and, and Scott and the Morlocks. Uh, I believe this guy's name is Sunder. S-U-N-D-E-R. That so, makes sense. 
It's yeah. like a, it's like a Solomon Grundy ripoff. Yeah. No. So Solomon, wow. is this is this also the first time we see Psyche use his powers without his visor? It I think it very well might be because I think when he's used it before, he's always been in his actual uh, yeah. costume, right? His, his his gear. Yeah, and then and you you see, I think you actually see, and then like you said in the pre- previously on X Men, uh, Rogue, you know, gets the the powers there, mm-hmm. and she has to do it. But I don't. I think this is the first time we're seeing him, you know, kind of cut loose and. By the way, like even you're talking about the screen grab you got there, like the animation. Look at how unclean that blast is, right? <laughs> like you're really you're seeing how the the visor you know makes the optical blast organized, where this is just erratic and all over the place. Yep, which that's a great point to point out. The only time I could think when he used it before, I think when he's in the bar in episode like two, uh, a bartender or a drunk guy lifts his glasses with like a pool stick. So like mm. it shoots out, but and it's it not, shoots, yeah. Yeah, it's not him intentionally. They're just like letting loose, like he tends to do. Right. Yeah. So so basically, um, he's letting loose. The Morlocks are getting pushed back. That brings us to who I'm going to refer to the entire episode as the MV freaking P yeah. of the Morlocks. I think her name was Anna Lee. Um, yeah. Miss Lee. I wish she like lived <laughs> in my building. When I can't sleep on a weeknight, just to give me a little nut <laughs> in the next room, you know? <laughs> just like, she needs like a one nine hundred number, you just call her up and she just, you know, she puts you out. Five bucks, puts you out. It's a good better, idea. Better than NyQuil, just pop right out. You yeah. Know? That, that would be, I, I would have slept through Love most that. of the last three years if I had that opportunity. <laughs> um, it would have woke up like Rip frickin' Van Winkle with a, lo- a longer beard than normal. <laughs> the beard. Oh, what man. year is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Is the pandemic still going on? Yes, put me back out. Yes, okay, put me back out. <laughs> I'll catch up later on, on on YouTube when I have the opportunity. Yeah, I have a lot in the can. I'll just put it all as, as yeah. uh, you know, popping up. There you go. Uh, so Four Feathers mm-hmm. said Callisto had enhanced senses. Uh, also, he threw out there the comment that uh, better sight, superhuman strength. So I think somebody had asked what Callisto. Yeah, Lucas asked what Callisto's oh. were. Um, J Shot, because we do like to tie in some Marvel Legends talk here. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you pick yeah. up that Wolverine five pack that had Callisto in it? Yes, and the only reason I picked that five pack up because I wanted Callisto because I just rewatched the series, um, and I wanted uh, what's his name from Hellfire Club. Uh, 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 yeah, what his name? yeah, is I want to say Mastermind, but I don't know if that's right. Yeah, I think he, uh, yeah, it's the it is Mastermind. Right. Yeah, they don't, yeah. don't call that in the cartoon, but yeah, that's yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I, because I, I, I only bought Cyber. That's I just bought Cyber by himself on eBay. <laughs> oh, see, Cyber's the one that I was like, man, I don't need this guy. So uh, I would have, I would have given you my Cyber. <laughs> so we didn't need um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sorry, man. Um, actually, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be a toy con. Are you going to toy con next weekend? I was gonna bring that up in the episode, sir. Um, All right, sorry, I'm jumping ahead again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm glad you brought it up. I might have forgot. Uh, I did not yeah. intend to originally, but the great Art G and Lago Figs reached out to me today and asked, and I mm-hmm. talked to the GF and. I think we're gonna take a ride out on Saturday. That's awesome. So I'm uh, Matt and I are gonna be there on Saturday. Uh, we'll have a we actually have a table, so oh. we're gonna be selling some we're gonna be selling some Marvel Legends pretty cheap and stuff. Um, you know, we got like new sticker packs, and we're gonna be doing like interviews and stuff. So you know, come come hang out. I'm I'm only gonna be there on Saturday. I've actually got family obligations on Sunday, but Matt will be there on Sunday too. So I'm glad that you guys are. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday then. Very cool. We'll, 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 we'll be we'll be there Saturday. So I'll see you Saturday. All right. Yeah, Perfect. We'll um, and now that you mentioned it too, I might hit you guys up for a con convos episode while we're there for my YouTube channel as Let's well. Let's do it. I wanted to get do you guys it. when we were at Zolo Con. It just didn't match up with time, unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah, well, and we did that. We did that like post one, right? Well, we can. Uh, yeah, we, we could always do something like that too. Yeah. That'd be cool, man. Um, here's your shot, Jay. Shot. There it is. That's it. That's it. It's just uh, Wolverine looking at a Vienna sausage. No, what's he looking at again? Uh, sorry. Uh, uh... <laughs> Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> There it is. There it is. So, like, you know what's funny, though, is in that screen grab, it makes it look like he's in love with Cyclops. You know, You're like he's covering, I, I he's covering up Gene, you know. Just he's so. visualizing himself. Like, he's actually shorter than Gene, so, like, he'd be closer to yeah. like, his belly button, I think. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he could fit nicely on, on Cyclops' busting chest. So, yeah. <laughs> Glass babies, what's up, man? <laughs> So yeah, it's obviously right. this is that iconic moment. Um, was it Mondo that made the figure for this? Yep, Mondo made the figure for this. 
it was actually I could I really considered buying it, and then I was worried that I was going to jump into. I mean, that's the that shot is clearly why Wolverine's in love with Cyclops. I mean, <laughs> any man that could wear that and uh, well, that's not that's not Cyclops. That's Gambit. Who am I talking about? Okay, um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm sure they looked exactly the same. Wow. Um, I love that. And again, you mentioned earlier something being so 90s. So 90s, yeah. Gambit's strutting around in the freaking banana hammock here, right? This yep. <laughs> but he's, he, by the way, he's in a banana hammock and Rogue is covered up completely. Yeah, which so. they, don't, they don't shy away from showing off women anatomy on this show, really. So, right. Um, but also, also, like for a woman who is, you know, worried about touching people, you know, she's walking pretty close to him. Yeah, yeah. He's, walking pretty close little, to him. A little graze of the elbow, and all of a sudden Gambit's in the emergency room, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> this this uh, banana the old, uh, the old Marvel. It's an old, it's old rotten banana hammock is what happens there. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, this made me also think of like the old Marvel and Wizard World, like bikini and bik- bathing episode. Uh, bathing oh yeah. Which, yep. Looking uh, back, at it, are really weird. <laughs> yeah, it was really weird, but hey, you know. Yeah, it was the nineties. <laughs> okay back then. Um, yeah. So this is where we see Wolverine literally cutting the picture, which we'll see at the end of the episode where mm-hmm. he obviously is indicating that the hatred for Cyclops. Um, yep. So Psych wakes up and he of course is strapped to a slab, you know, uh, which, you know, we've all had that happen to us one point or another. In our lives. At least once. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't, you know, if you didn't party hard enough, were you really living? So yeah. Exactly. I mean, he's actually fortunate not a giant blade swinging left and right above him, slowly yeah. <laughs> working its way down no, and cut him in half. No sword of Damocles above him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, then we find out Leech is there, and uh, Cyclops is like, oh, snap, I don't have my powers right now. And, you know, if you're watching this, this is the first time you really get to see his eyes without the red, <laughs> without the, the crimson beams there. Yep. Yeah. And was it Leech that took his powers? I can't remember, honestly. Oh. Yes. Um, so yeah. Earlier, that makes... uh, Leech did not have telekinesis when he like floats the fruit to him, like Luke Skywalker's yeah. model, you know? Um, this is his power set, I believe, to actually leech off of other people's powers. Or leech Got them it. away. That's right. Um, I, had, right. I actually wonder, too, this is probably common knowledge, I'm just thinking of it, in X-Men The Last Stand, which we will not talk about for very long, I promise, um, they have the boy who can leech people's powers. I wonder if that was supposed to be a version of leech. It looked like a human. Probably, probably was. It probably was. X Men: The Last Stand. Oh my god. Kelsey Grammer uh, was rated as Beast, though. I'll say that much. Yeah, okay. he kind of was, wasn't he? He was kind of perfect for that, in some odd way. All those huh. years of Cheers and Frasier were only so he can play Beast in the X Men. In one episode, in one in one movie. In one oh. movie. Uh, yes. I we'll stop there. I'll say some bad things about that movie. Um. So here we get we get a shot of of, of of Callisto, which I didn't quite crop it perfect here. They're living in the sewers, but she has perfect electricity and multiple televisions in her layer that she's somehow been tracking Cyclops on the surface layer. She seems like a bit of a stalker to me. I'd be a little bit nervous at this point if I were Psych. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, they're they're living in the sewer. There's power down there. They're not animals. They're just sewer people. Yeah, and they, they watch television. You know. Um we get a really cool look at a lot of the Morlocks because I think a lot of people picture the Morlocks just as the ones that were fighting. Here we get like a, a duck billed guy. We get some yeah. random dude who's not wearing a shirt. Somebody's in a cloak. Uh, we got another. He's not wearing a shirt. You, you point out that he's not wearing a shirt. He's got no mouth, I think, is what it looks like. <laughs> and then you got this like pinhead looking guy in the back here, too. You know. Uh, yeah. So Which to me makes sense because like, okay, they don't look like a regular quote unquote people or mutants that don't have mm-hmm. disfigurement, but that'll bring him back to the, the to the VIP a little bit later on because yeah. she looks fine to me. Um so here basically <laughs> Callisto's like, I've been tracking you, I like you. And, and then we get this real weird moment where she's like, I need you to give me an error. <laughs> <laughs> oh, said Scott's like if I had a dollar for every time uh you know I've I've heard this before. So, it's just you know. it's just very awkward and she's essentially like i need you to impregnate me and then he's, he's all like i'm no good to you here my powers are fueled by the sun and she's like i don't care that's not what i want i want it's not what i want <laughs> <laughs> it'd be I, some psych i just can't uh this is up there for quote of the night i don't typically uh screen grab the actual subtitles in here i did it uh-huh. on purpose so she's like um I need an error. His response is, so take out an error. 
<laughs> it's almost like he doesn't know what she's asking for, right? <laughs> you know, I need an heir. Okay, so what? Like, what do you want me to do about it? Heir Take out an ad. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what do you need? Uh, what are you talking about? Right. Um, we'll find somebody. Yeah. So here we find out that for whatever reason, she thinks that if she strings up Gene by a chain, he'll go in the back room with her and give her a kid. Um, right. I'm sure there's a really nice room, like a what do they, they call it on Jersey Shore? Squash room, squish room, something like that. <laughs> smash room, smash room, smash room, oh, smash down right. the light. Um, yeah, there, there's smash something that light. they go off to. But Gene, Gene's like, all right, to hell with this. I'm gonna just destroy everybody because I'm uber powerful. He's my date, and then all of a sudden she gets overwhelmed. And we, I love these little crossfades we get with the mm -hmm. telepathy, where like you see all the visions. I was like seeing these. And, yeah, it's a good way to it's a good it's a good way to to like show that you know, the communication between both smush room four feathers is smush room there it, there it is. is i knew he wouldn't let us down four feathers is helping us out <laughs> i couldn't quite get the screenshot right but they do a cool kind of crossfade here where xavier's explaining what's going on and then like the x like slowly like just the way they they they, they transition to the next shot there's like an x logo that kind of engulfs the photo um, yeah like, like um, like they do in like they do in Star Wars, yeah. Yep. With all like those the crossfades and uh, yeah, cross yeah, the old school, old school dissolves. Yep. I think crossfade was a band I used to listen to in the '90s too. Uh, <laughs> I thought it should have been. Um, so this is where we come back to the claustrophobia J shot. So here we have the X Men walking down into the subway, trying to find the sewer, and they're all like, um, "Does anybody want to point out the fact that our?" team leader right now is probably gonna have a meltdown and she almost killed us earlier in the day when we were like training in this environment no uh, yeah. now she uh this one uh what i can't remember her name but doesn't she show up again she, does she show up with sinister is, is it is it supposed to be vertigo I, I it looks like vertigo i thought it was supposed to be vertigo yeah it, it looks like her i don't think she shows the same power set but she looks very similar so it could just be like that they they didn't plan to use her in season two, and right. they call the character, character model. model. Yeah, it is a very similar look. So the the mud guy gets Wolverine's <laughs> gambit, and it takes Storm all but like a minute to freak out. <laughs> like, she's not in any way mentally prepared for this mission at all, Jay. Nope, <laughs> not at all, not at all. So here's the MVP, oh. Jay. Shot freaking she has freaking P. Now I mentioned they're all down there because they're like hideous freaks. Doesn't she just look like somebody's grandma? She's just old, you know. She's just old. But remember, the '90s were a very unforgiving time. So when you got old, you were you were shunned. So you know, True. <laughs> especially, especially in New York, they're like, "You're too old for me. yeah, no more. You're too old. <laughs> Get out. Okay. See you, Lucas. Oh. Thanks, buddy. Have a nice night, man. Nice to meet you, Luke. Uh, so she comes in, and they find them in a room. Storm blasts the door off the hinges, and. Uh, She's basically mind wiped. I'm uh, not mind wiped. Convinced Jean she's a kid, so she's all like, "Mommy, mommy!" And then she like turns on Wolverine and convinces him there's scorpions all over his body. Yeah, which I never understood why he freaked out over this. Right? Like, okay, there's scorpions all over your body. You got a healing factor and you got claws, dude. Like, this feels like a pretty easy fix. Yeah. Just, why are you being such a complainer? Just, just get rid of yeah, him. Stop, stop being a wuss, man. You're never going to win Cyclops over like this. No, of course not. So <laughs> let me mention that. The so Wolverine's first words to Jean, after he saves her, are, don't worry, Jean, I'm here. Her first words, Jay Shot, are, where's Cyclops? Where's Cyclops? And that's got to hurt. That's got to hurt. It, it is a kick right in the chin for all men who are right. in the situation, right? Uh, that's it. And we've all been there, by the way, right? Like every one of us has been there. Every one of us has liked someone, uh, you know, and uh, and and been the third wheel. So for sure, it's and, and again, that's why they included the show, right? Um, that's it. So they kind of pull a little fake Rooney here. They try to make it look like Cyclops is dead. Wolverine, of course, the nose knows, right? That's it. And we find out that they have a shapeshifter who doesn't look horribly disfigured either. I mean. If he's a shapeshifter, he could probably live on up on the surface if he wanted to. Probably could, yeah. Well, but so like he's like a genuine shapeshifter though, because like he's not like a morph. Like he's more of like a, I call him more of like a plastic man, right? You know. So look at right here. Uh, I mean, he like opens up a hole in his body like a giant ring. Um, 
I like how he like globs to the ceiling and drops down on Storm. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> Where is that action figure, Marvel? In? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need, uh, yeah, like I need a three pack of him, normal, him in the giant circle, and then him as the glob coming from the ceiling. I, I know that right okay. now that Ryan Ting or Dan Yoon or Dwight Sell are probably watching. They're one of the six viewers right now. So, guys, make, <laughs> it, make it happen. I know you're not yeah. watching right now. Um, I, I actually, I actually think uh, there was this like there was a couple months ago there was this thing where like. Uh, Machu was on this whole kick where he wanted a depowered um, Colossus. Okay. And he had thrown that into the enablers one time while Ryan was on the, on while Ryan Ting was on the, uh, on the stream. And uh, Kevin was like, Kevin was like, yeah, it'd be really cool to get a depowered Colossus. And Ryan just sat there. <laughs> and like every one of us was like, Oh, are we getting one? Like, <laughs> no. You know, so they they might be listening. They might be listening. You never know. So, That's so funny. And, uh, you know, well, when Ryan was on Infinity Equation with us last year, um, I, my, my one of my best friends who dabbles in Legends always was on the fence about going back and, and purchasing the Toys R Us Strife, and okay, that was, like, was like stupid expensive, right? So yeah, I said to, to Mr. Ting, I said, "Sir, I I'd be neglectful of my friendship if I didn't say Strife, please, sir, Strife." Well, he knew it was coming. He kind of laughed and like made a face because he couldn't tell us. Yeah. But, but to this day, I'm like, you're welcome, everybody. I got you Strife. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but you got like, didn't we get Strife in like a five pack with like characters we didn't want? We did, and I bought it. It's here. You, you did buy it? <laughs> okay. Right. Because it was like, know. it was like random, uh, handsome Jack or whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, for pretty uh, boy, pretty boy. Pretty boy. Uh, that's uh, it. Uh, uh, you mentioned Vertigo earlier. Vertigo. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, uh, all right. So Wolverine steps up the Col uh, yeah, Colossus. I'm off thought. Uh, steps up here to uh, Callisto. She like runs like Skeletor out of the room, you know? <laughs> Till we meet again. <laughs> I, I had to put the Gambit diving and throwing the cards in here because I freaking love oh, that. Oh, classic. Where's classic shop? Yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of classic. What's up, Jesser? Jesser's in the house. What's going on, Jess? What's going on, dude? Thanks, buddy. Uh, so yeah, so Wolverine's like, it's okay. I love when they run. I love the hunt. Um, one woman <laughs> turns into a freaking dinosaur or a giant lizard or something. Yeah, you know that's Lizard Liz. That's uh, that's who she is. So. Yeah, she she has her own room down there. Um, lizard Lizard Liz, Cement Carl. I don't know who else we got. <laughs> you know what? I kind of think that should be their names. Um, that's, yeah. So I mentioned earlier. I'm pretty sure this is the mutant that um, later on joins the Four Horsemen as Pestilence. Um, Yep. He f's up Gambit. Rogue uh, takes Gambit out of there, so now they're off the they're off the playing board. The playing board now, right? They're off the, the playing field. Mm -hmm. uh, Wolverine is, is trying to find Callisto. He smells Cyclops, goes and gets him, and he's even like, "I can make two women real sad right now, but I love Jean too much <laughs> to make her cry." <laughs> what? A, what? A, like you jerk, right? Like make yeah. two women real sad. Yeah. All right. But he screws himself over because somehow they hear him through the slab that they're in, and uh, the MVP in the middle there will use that later on against Wolverine. Obviously, that's true. That's true. Well, I, we learned Calypso has uh, enhanced hearing, so that's how she hears it. Oh snap! That's right. Damn. There you go. Like I said earlier, tied it all together. Forty years old and still learning. What can I say? Tied yeah. it all together. Yep. Yep. So, um, so basically, uh, the MVP uh interferes and makes wolverine basically want to go kill cyclops uh he fights through it gene blasts him once but wolverine's okay he's not going to kill anybody then we get a lightsaber battle uh-huh yeah yeah but why not <laughs> we get a lightsaber battle um no lightsaber battle. jay shot do you remember like what the terms of this lightsaber battle are i don't i don't remember the terms but i do remember it being very american gladiator it was it was the pugil sticks were out right yep that's it love that we gotta do a whole we gotta do an hour show just on gladiators one day man um, we yeah we could just start doing a 90s start doing a 90s show <laughs> that remind uh i'll see if i a rabbit holes this is my fault my girlfriend texted me earlier and said did you ever watch the roundhouse on snick i'm like of course i watched the roundhouse as a kid I don't, think I, I don't think i don't think i did i have to, oh, watch, I have to go back and check it We'll talk later. <laughs> I don't think I had. I don't think I had Schnick. I don't think I had like. I know it's Nickelodeon, but I don't. I don't remember that at all. 
Uh, well, um, I, I, that's why she brought it up. There was an Instagram post. Somebody said they have a theory only certain people got it broadcast on their cable company, and some kids yeah. never saw it. So, uh, Jess, you you, man, appreciate it, Jess. Thank you, sir. Well, very nice of you to say. So, there's a, a you know very nice. You mentioned Star Wars, right? Nice Star Wars image right there, pulled back of mm-hmm. them. Um, and the terms Look. were Storm can't use her powers, but if she wins, she controls the Morlocks. That's right. She yep. becomes the queen. Yep. He wins, and she, of course, is all like, you can all come live up, upstairs with us, and we have extra rooms in our giant mansion, and get paid a stipend so you can go get popcorn and go to a movie sometimes. Watch YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have Netflix. We, have, we even have HBO. It's free. Um, yeah. It's it's called Max now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all. Like, I just did you know. wait? Did you did you see the thing that said? Uh, so HBO Max became Max. Your move, Peacock. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not taking the P off our name. I saw that one pop up. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're we're really living in a simulation. I'll tell you. Yeah, <laughs> it's hysterical. All right, so Storm wins. They they say we're not going to come to the surface till mutants are accepted. Storm's like, okay, well, it's going to happen. So eventually, but in the meantime, I'm going to let Callisto continue to be in charge while I'm not here. So right. showing Callisto mercy, which again shows the X-Men care, right? Right. And it, this comes back too, right? Doesn't it does. At some point, like Storm goes down and it was like, I can, we can get an army or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I think there's an episode where they actually resent her. Where yeah. uh, it might be the Christmas episode actually where Leech is dying. Oh, it is a, it is a Christmas episode. My God, they had Christmas episodes. I, I mean, forgot and, about and, that. And uh, a Halloween episode with a pumpkin in the front, too. All right, right. All right, right. Was, beat, was a beat, Wolverine wearing a beast mask, I believe is what it was. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, the thing you That's so good. So amazingly, Wolverine, like in every friggin' episode, storms off at the end. Yeah. Every episode this season, he's stormed off. Another another classic meme, by the way, though, too, right? Like this yeah. not realizing this episode is chock full of goodness. So <laughs> but every every freaking episode he leaves. Um yeah. so Xavier being being I, I try to curse just once an episode. I'll, I'll use my curse here. Being a dick, okay. he's like he's basically like, So I imagine your date was eventful. <laughs> He's being a Richard. You could just call him a Richard. This way you don't have to use your curse there. Well, his yeah. middle name isn't Richard. That's why I call him Dick. Don't, don't be such a Richard. Charles yeah. Richard no. Xavier. Um, <laughs> and, he, and, and he gives Storm a pep talk. He's like, you know, Storm, you did a great job today, but it's because I put you through hell in the danger room. All right. So freaking Chuck. He's so weird. Uh, we close <laughs> out the episode. Scott and Jean having absolutely no social skills or social cues. Knowing Wolverine's in love with her, go to thank him for saving them. And we get the split picture from earlier in the episode and to be continued. All right. And this is actually, there's a behind the scenes shot of this where they both pick up their half and go, he's in love with me. He's in love with you. So, yeah. It's It's like Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, my God. So I mentioned the cameo, so I won't spend too much time. I'm pretty sure, as I said, that this is this Morlock. Later ends up on Muir Island and then joins Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. We'll check that out later on. So, Jay Shot, mm-hmm. this brings us to the part of the episode where you got to give us your faves, man. Who was your favorite uh, character in the episode? I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with two characters. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with swimsuit uh, swimsuit Gambit and Rogue. That's those are my favorite characters. Just just because they just looked ridiculous. So that's perfect. gonna be my perfect, perfect, my favorite. Um, I haven't hidden my 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 uh, trust in the MV freaking P. Some yeah, there you go. Anna May, Anna Lee, the old lady that make you sleep. <laughs> What's that? Oh. Um, favorite quote in the episode, sir. Oh man, uh, um, when you said favorite quote, I thought you were talking about favorite quote in like the series. Oh, I actually have a couple of them. Well, that's okay. Uh, you can consider those two. You could. Yeah. So, like, one of my favorite quotes because I remember it distinctly is like I think it's the end of the first season or like the first episode. When you know, surprising the X Mansion is destroyed, yeah. and uh, and and Charles is like, uh, I forget what he says, but he goes, "No, my watch has been magnetized." And like, I just remember that line standing out to me as a kid. And I was just like, oh, yep. you know, like um, that. And then there's another one. Like, I don't remember the quote exactly, but when uh, <laughs> um, 
<laughs> uh, Charles is trying to like cure Sabretooth. Remember, like Sabretooth like fakes his way into the X Mansion, yeah. yeah, and he like Wolverine like loses it, and Xavier's like, "No, I haven't probed the recesses of his mind," and and Janet Wolverine's like, "I'll probe his recesses." <laughs> it's just like <laughs> there's a party that's like, "Who's writing this?" <laughs> but it's also perfect. Oh. He also routinely um, calls people scum sucking piece of gutter trash. So you yeah, know, some yeah, yeah, yeah. Flexibility. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I would say favorite quote in this episode is probably like, you know, it's it's when your MVP there is uh is going like um what does she say? She has like a this like full of scorpions, full of scorpions. Like she's got like a line like that. It is pretty funny. Yep, that that yep, that's on point, man. I think that's a good one. Um <coughs> yeah, that's a great those are great ones. And uh I had a couple I enjoyed as well, but I think I'll just double down and I'll go with uh, uh, Charles at the end, essentially saying, being very uh, pompous and, oh, so I guess your date was uh, very, <laughs> very bad. Yeah. yeah. I'll probe his recess. Yeah, that's it for Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's just such a Richard so often that it's like, yeah. but again, we find out that he's paying them. He's paying their room and board and, and at stake, yeah. so. You gotta get along yeah. with the teacher. Um, he's yeah, he's he's te- he's teacher. He's father. He's got a lot of work to do. You know, it's wears, tough. He wears a lot of hats in um, that house. Um, he wears a lot of hats. And by the way, he probably hears them making fun of him too, right? Yeah, like he knows that they're making fun of him. So I know what you're thinking, Cyclops. Yeah, this is a new tie. Um, <laughs> so, uh, fa- favorite moment in the episode, the exchange thing that occurred or whatever. Um. I think my favorite moment's got to be the uh, I, I want to say the me- like the classic meme of him on the on the what you call it on the bed, but I'm gonna go with uh, him collapsing into Jean's arms because I still feel like that was faked, right? Like that was such a like I'm gonna pretend to faint so she grabs me and get close to her. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Well, let's not. And then just how getting much he, how much his adamant skele- adamantium skeleton weighs? He could have crushed her. Oh, true, he could have crushed her. I never thought of that. How much it weighs? Is it heavy? In the, again, in the movies, it is. Maybe in the in the cartoon, he's is is that why he's short? Because it just like keeps weighing him down. I think it's just because he he uh, drank a lot of coffee as a kid. Oh, that's it. Stunt his growth. That's not your growth. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh. Favorite moment: me, bar none, Cyclops take out an ad. <laughs> take out an ad. Take out an ad. Put it in the paper. All right, Jay Scott. Um, Rock a Boy sir, Scout. If you could. I can't thank you enough for being here tonight, man. Oh, dude, this is fun. I I could honestly, I, I know we we uh, go back and check out uh, obviously Matry Toys and, and Jay Shot's channel. I'll him talk about that in a minute, but we did all get together for a little collaboration after ZoloCon, which is a lot of fun. Um, oh. I could talk to you for hours, Matt, about random dude, stuff. Dude, yeah. I want to educate you about Roundhouse on the next channel next time. We yeah, talk. let's do it. Let's do it. We'll uh, we'll have a snick at night. So, um, yeah, man. No, I, I dude, I, I appreciate you inviting me, and you know, I'm. Happy to jump in whenever you need somebody. Happy to fill in. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm just I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be part of the community, dude. So whenever I get a chance to to jump on and and talk to people and nerd out about stuff, I'm thrilled. Especially if it's gonna be about X Men or Turtles or you know anything like that. So yeah, dude, I think this is great. I love it. I'll uh, you know, and uh, I <laughs> I had a blast. You know, I I was disappointed that you weren't there, but I had a blast filling in with uh, with Dante on the Infinity Equation with uh, with Machu and. Um, and Darth and Donna, uh, I dude, I don't, I don't think we laughed uh, that hard in a while. So, um, but uh, yeah, man, anytime, anytime you need me, just throw up the signal, I'll be there. Thanks, man. I think that was the night that my my girlfriend was at a wedding, and I, we have a, a basically he's still a puppy, a Chihuahua named Bruno, and uh, mm. he can't really handle quite yet, like just chilling while I live stream. So usually she's yeah. watching him, and I just. With her being away, I was spending, I was basically baby puppy sitting and watching you guys laughing my ass off. So uh, <laughs> it's a good show. It was great. So, Jay Shaw, please tell everybody what are your socials? Where can people find you? Yeah. What project you're working on? Uh, you get me at Jay Shot, uh, Jay Shot underscore H20 at Instagram. Um, and that's pretty much it. I, I've got a TikTok, but it's not, you know, it's not as used as, uh, as the Instagram is. And then uh, uh, you can catch me and Machu Toy. Every Wednesday on uh, Machu Toys uh, YouTube channel uh, for Between Two Sentinels, where you know we sit down with people of the toy community, or as I like to call them, toy community adjacent. You know, try to get new people on, um, little people outside of the toy community, but still like in the geek world, and you know talking about nerd stuff. Um, you know, last week uh, or sorry, yesterday 
we had eighties baby on. Um, that was just, uh, it was just a lot of fun. Just chopping it up with Dario and just hanging out talking about, he's got a new show called behind the lens that, uh, you know, he, I was honored to, to talk to him on his show too. I think that's going to come out in a couple weeks. Uh, if you watched infinity equation that night, it'll be on smarch 31st. That's when it's coming out. Um, <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, dude, uh, that's, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm getting, I, I took a little, a little break from, taking some toy shots and trying to get back into it. Uh, so, you know, nothing really, nothing really new and exciting there, but, uh, you know, just keep plugging away. That's incredible. And that show is on 8 PM Eastern standard time on Wednesdays, 8 PM on Wednesdays. Yep. 8 PM on Wednesdays. And, you know, we, we try to stick to an hour, hour and a half last night. I think we went two and a half hours, but, uh, you know, we'll never cut a guest off, but we'll always want to be respectful of their time. So, um, but, uh, yeah, man, we, we try to keep it light and easy and, and just chop it up and, you know, have a good time. I think uh, next week we're going to have Yoko on uh, from the Enabler stream and uh, Boba Squadron. Um, and she's also on, she's got a Twitch channel too. And I'm, I'm blanking on the name of her, her Twitch channel. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it'll be cool to talk to her. Um, and then, uh, you know, again, we'll be, uh, Machu and I will be at ToyCon uh, in, on June 10th and 11th. He'll be on the 11th. I'll be just the 10th. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have our own. We'll have our own, I don't know, dude, like we got our own table just to hang out. Like it's just, you know, so stop by. We'll, uh, we got, we got these nifty little sticker packs that I've been, uh, painfully putting together, uh, with all our new art from Chamba. Um, you know, and, uh, and we'll be doing some in- interviews and content and stuff like that. So it should be, it should be a good time. We're going to be exhausted, but it'll be a really good time. It's always worth it. Uh, I did put just sharing with everybody the ToyCon NJ in New Jersey. So if anybody wants to check that out, uh, I believe I'm going Saturday as well. So looking forward to hopefully seeing you there, of course. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, and I think uh, just uh, not to go too long on us here, but I, I want to add, yeah, I also really enjoyed, um, was it Toy Father, you, Machu, uh, Yimbo, did an awesome like three hour long draft a few weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, so we, um, it is the, you, so we we both kind of like started our show. So they do the, the Toy Pit community uh, top 10 every week, which is a great show. And it's, they highlight a lot of really awesome toy photographers. Um, you know, and they, we both kind of started on Wednesday and Machu and I make this joke about like when we started on Wednesday, nobody was on Wednesday and now everybody's on Wednesday. Yep. Um, but, uh, so they they start their show at eight 30. Uh, we go on at eight and this is actually the second time that we've done kind of a crossover episode, uh, where they'll start last, last time they started on our stream and then we all jumped over to their stream um this time we just went because now you can broadcast to both channels we just went live for for three hours and i was thankful to have (laughs) i was thankful to have other people on so that we could take bathroom breaks and things like that because three hours is a lot of time um especially when you drink your water uh like the amazing says so um but uh yeah man it's uh it's that was a lot of fun i i still haven't cleaned up from the figure draft so i've got all these figures out just laying about um you know, of random figures and things that I should be cleaning up. But uh, I did get, I don't know if I recently, I've gotten the Indiana Jones figure in, which is uh, he's, he's pretty dope. If you have not, I think you and I were talking about this, but uh, he's, he's pretty dope and I'm all in on that line now. So um, As you know, I, I only have the uh, club Obi one and I love it. I really do. Yeah. Like he's, he's great. Yeah. He's a, he's a good fig. Um, there he goes. So, have you lost? Uh, the yeah, yet? I think you said you lost the diamond. <laughs> I instantly lost it, like in the car, and then I found it. So I, I'm good, and I like then I basically like found it in the car, and then I put it in my mouth so that I didn't lose it until I got home. Uh, so you know, that was uh, that was fun. And then uh, I recently got since we're talking about X Men, we talked about Rogue. Um, you know, you got to watch out because Swiggity Swiggity Swooty, he's coming for that booty. Uh, so here he is. But uh, yeah, this Diamond Select Apocalypse is awesome. He's like perfectly scaled too, right? Because he should be bigger than the regular X Men. So yeah, and he, wa- and he was uh, early on in season one. I think he was thinner but taller. Whereas like yes, the Marvel Legend is very chunky, which I like. But I- I've kicked it around. If I if I see it at retail, like in a comic shop, I, I eventually want to line up all the Apocalypse Apocalypse I in a row. Uh-huh. So have like. Yeah. A different size, different heights along with the build a figure. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, so I, 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 the second person who endorsed that recently. So, and dude, he was cheap. Like, I think I got him at like one of the toy shows, and he was like thirty bucks. Like, that's nothing, you know. I mean, we're paying twenty five dollars for a legend. Like, um, but yeah, you're right. Like, I think this one for me lines up better with the cartoon. Um, I know that they made that weird colorway one. I wasn't a fan. I know a lot of people are excited about it. And hey, if you're excited about it, good for you. I'm not. I'm not pooping on it. Um, just wasn't for me. But I do think I think that other the build a figure one. I have that one too. That like chunky one. Yep. That one reads more comic book to me, and I like that. But for its own way. Um, and then of course you have uh, the Asia Apocalypse Apocalypse, which um, I wrestled with with those Ap- Asia Apocalypse man. Like that was Age of Apocalypse was probably one of like the first comic book series that I remember picking up from start to finish. Yep. Like in every week, religiously going to the comic book shop and picking up those new comics. And that was like, that was one of the things that like cemented me into it. So I've got, a, I've got a special place for those figures. I know a lot of people don't like them, but there's a, there's a special place. And plus that was my first morph figure. So, you know, yep. I'm, I'm looking at my shelf right now. I have every AOA figure. I, I, I wish Dante were here. Dante, if you catch us in the playback, Dante hates AOA and McFarland. I know, I know. And I, every chance I get to take a swipe, I, I, I did a top 10 Age of Apocalypse Marvel Legends countdown on my channel just to spite Dante. <laughs> we can check that nice. out free time. Yeah, man. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, dude, like, like hey, I mean, not, I think I've said this before. I was the first person or one of the first people to get thrown off with Toy Migos because I said Morph was my favorite character. And Janie was like, <laughs> out. So, so. Gone. that was it. That's, that's all we could take. Uh, yeah. Got to like who you like. Hey man, that's right. Wait, well, hey, thank you for being on here. Uh, everybody, check yeah, out dude. The Sentinels uh, on this upcoming Wednesday night. Just quick update: there will not be an episode of the Infinity Equation this Friday. We're not going to be on. Um, so hopefully, I have a lot of uh, energy for the rest of the weekend to do some toy hunting. Uh, but as always, Good. everybody, um, if you're new, please consider that subscribe button. It's free for you; it doesn't cost you anything. Helps us grow the channel tremendously to march to 5,000 subscribers. Go ahead with that bell for notifications. That way YouTube actually notifies you and tells you when we post new content on the channel, like our weekly toy and reviews and live streams. Leave a comment down below, hit that like button. And for daily toy content and daily toy updates, try checking us out over at Instagram and Twitter at disavowed underscore 12. Hey, Jay Shop. Yeah. If you're going toy hunting this week, please try to remember the three Ps of the toy hunt, patience, persistence, but most of all, politeness. Oh, okay. That's the last one I always get confused with. That's the spiel, man. I thought the third one was pushing people out of the way. So, yeah. Telepathically, use my telekinesis. Persistence, polite. What was it? <laughs> Patience, persistence, and pushing people down. So, <laughs> there's an AEW chase figure. They might get pushed out of the way. <laughs> oh. oh man. Hey man, right. don't get. Don't, I'm just saying, don't get in the way of me and my Ninja Turtles. That's on you. Yeah, the, the new NECA fig. It's mine, not yours. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, everybody. Take care. Stay healthy. We'll be seeing all of you at the pegs. Thanks, guys. And...